Preparing a talk like this uh, on theoretical physics is hard work. There are lots of exciting things to talk about, but initially they look something like um, this. And you need to translate this into language. But I thought it's totally worth the effort because what I want to share with you tonight um, are not the formula, but the fascination with their content. So let me begin by asking you a question about yourself. What do you want to know? I mean, what do you really want to know? What are questions that you cannot let go of? Is it maybe, why does the Mona Lisa smile? Who killed John F. Kennedy? How do I bake a perfect croissant? Or uh, what is luck? These questions that drive us are often actually very hard to formulate. Although we feel we are onto something, we are lacking the right words. As a theoretical physicist, I want to understand why nature works the way it does. We share this motivation with all scientists, but theoretical phys physicists in particular try to identify the notions and terms in uh, concepts and notions in terms of which we can think and talk about nature. We try to find models and mechanisms by which we can from which we can derive the fundamental laws of nature. We formulate our models using mathematics, and of course this is a highly uh, specialized procedure, and the outcome may look somewhat alien to the uh, layman. But what this always really is about is the goal to catch a glimpse at the very inner workings of nature and to identify notions in terms of which we can build up scientific and technological knowledge. One of these concepts we use to explain nature, nature are forces. The word can have different meaning in everyday language, but in physics we know four kinds of fundamental forces. Two of them we encounter every day. The first one is gravity, which famously made the apple fall on Newton's head. And the second one is electromagnetism, which does not only lie behind all of electricity and magnetism, but it also forms waves, which we know as radio signals or light. The two other forces are the strong and the weak nuclear force. They are responsible for the formation of protons and neutrons, and they make protons and neutrons clump together to form atomic nuclei. The first force, gravity, is described and explained by um, Einstein's famous theory of relativity. This sets gravity apart from the other three forces, which we can describe in the unified framework of quantum theory. In quantum theory, forces are explained as being carried from one object to the other via, uh, so by, via quantum particles. For example, light, which is an electromagnetic phenomenon, can be understood as a bunch, as, as a stream of photons, the quantum particles of light. These quantum particles have very surprising properties from which you may have heard already. Quantum particles can be at two places or take two paths at the same time. Quantum particles can even pop into existence out of nowhere for a short time and vanish again. Now this might sound, might sound like science fiction, but is, it is already part of our everyday technology. In fact, I believe you carry it around in your pocket. If we didn't know about the quantum properties of matter, we would not be able to design modern electronics like you have them in your smartphone. Moreover, by using the quantum properties of light, it is possible to make communication completely safe from eavesdropping attacks. This technology called quantum cryptography will be available commercially soon. Now in contrast to this, the way we explain gravity is very different from the way we explain the quantized forces. Um, Einstein's theory of relativity is much more than just describing an attractive force between masses. It's the foundation for our understanding of space and time and the cosmos as a whole. The theory of relativity unifies space and time into one geometrical object, so-called space-time. If nothing is pushing or pulling us, we are moving through the space-time along a straight line. However, what matter does is it curves and bends space-time. So what's happening when two masses, masses are attracted by each other and move towards each other is that the straight lines along which they move through space-time have been bent towards each other. One of the most surprising predictions of uh, relativity are black holes. If a huge amount of mass is compressed into a very small radius, it curves space-time so strongly that nothing can escape from the inner region of the black hole any longer. Light, even light rays, are bent back towards the center of the black hole. Now you can probably imagine that the mathematics we use to describe such effects is very different from the mathematics we use to describe quantum theory. In fact, they are so different that nobody has succeeded yet in bringing them together in a consistent and convincing way. 
This is the biggest open problem in our fundamental understanding of nature today. We don't know what happens when effects from gravity and effects from quantum forces come together. This is very exciting because there's totally new physics to be discovered here and we will need new models and theories to describe it. Bridging this gap is not easy. On the one hand, we cannot describe gravity as a quantized force where, uh, where, quanti where quantum particles would carry the gravitational forces from one object to the other. That just doesn't work. And also if you try to go the other way, run into run also if you go to try the other way, we run into severe problems. If you look at what happens to our quantum theory when gravity curves space-time, we find that the very notion of a quantum particle becomes ill-defined. We cannot use it any longer. Two observers, two different observers traveling through a curved space-time along different lines do in general not agree on the number or even the existence of particles around them. So we find ourselves in a situation where our old notions and concepts are incompatible with each other. We will have to find new ways to think about physics in order to advance our understanding of nature from here. My research is guided by the idea that thinking about physics in terms of communication could provide us with a new and helpful framework. But how would you turn physics into a problem of communication? Well, let's have a look. Let's think of a situation where there's some kind of attracting force, attracting force acting between two parties, Alice and Bob say. Now this means that Alice has some influence in what happens over to Bob. If Alice wiggles around on her end, Bob will detect a change in the force. But this influence Alice could use to send a message to Bob, for example, via Morse code. This observation gives us, a, gives us the means to, um, describe, to describe the force between Alice and Bob in terms which are actually independent of the microscopical mechanism carrying the force from Alice to Bob. We can measure the force between Alice and Bob just by asking how effectively the force allows us to, um, to transmit information from Alice to Bob. In my research, I follow this approach and study communication at the interface of quantum theory and gravity. I do this by looking at a setup where Alice and Bob have to communicate via something that you could call a quantum Wi-Fi. So Alice and Bob are each just giving single atoms to signal um, to, uh, ascending and receiving devices, and the information is carried from one atom to the other by photons, those quantum particles of light. Now what I want to know is how much, uh, yeah, how much information in theory you could transmit from one atom to the other in different situations. This approach allows us to go one step beyond the boundaries of our old notions, because this question doesn't really care about the mechanism carrying the force from A to B. We can, this means we can now also ask this question and investigate situations where our old notion of quantum carrier part particles became problematic before. This means we can go into curved space-times and ask how our uh, ability to communicate information from one quantum system to another is affected when gravity bends space-time. Recently we found a surprising uh, one surprising effect there, which is almost an analog of a collect call. In certain situations, curvature of space-time makes it possible to transmit information without transmitting energy from the sender to the receiver. This means that Bob has to pay the energy bill for receiving Alice's message. We hope to, um, to find, to, to, um, to, yeah, we hope to find further insights about the interplay of gravity and quantum theory from this quantum Wi-Fi model. These insights could help us to identify properties which a unified theory of gravity and the quantized forces will need to have. Einstein's theory of relativity and quantum theory both did not only enable us to come up with new fascinating technologies, they also dramatically changed our understanding of nature, of space, of time, even of reality. Imagine what an impact a unified theory of quantum gravity could have. This is what I really want to know. How will we be able to describe nature, the new physics arising, when quantum theory and gravity merge? Thank you.